Hello everyone, welcome to my apartment. We are located in Brooklyn, New York. Um, we are in Brooklyn, New York, and we are gonna do a uh, project um, based on uh, atmospheric perspective and atmospheric perspective and color. Um, my name is Scott, and I'll be walking through some examples of artwork of atmospheric perspective um, also. Um, but a quick note, um, Southern Alleghenies um, invited me to do this. So uh, thank you, Morgan. I appreciate uh, giving me this opportunity. Um, <clears throat> so I am um, a working artist who uh, work, uh, lives and works in uh, Brooklyn. Um, I also work at the New York Public Library. Um, I do all sorts of arts. I do painting, <clears throat> I do drawing, I also do uh, photography. Uh, so with that said, I guess we'll just kind of jump into the lesson. Um, so we're gonna be, the main focus is gonna be atmospheric perspective and what that, uh, so I will gonna give you the definition of what atmospheric perspective is. So atmospheric perspective is basically using the atmosphere um, or using uh, a landscape um, and, a, and a field of color to create space. Um, the, uh, if you think of the word atmosphere in general, you hear in earth science like, you know, the earth's atmosphere. <clears throat> um, and, you know, uh, some people will say, oh, it's like the atmosphere is so muggy out. Well, that's from the air. And the air within you know, a landscape, if you look at a distant landscape, you will see, uh, <clears throat> you know, whether it's cloudy, whether you see like fog from, you know, pollution even. So that, and with, in terms of painting or drawing, <clears throat> in terms of painting or drawing, um, we are gonna use color. Uh, we use color, tone, uh, texture, line, to create that space. And, um, and to talk about perspective a little bit, so we have atmospheric atmosphere and perspective. And if, have you ever heard someone to, uh, ask you, so what's your perspective on this? Um, <clears throat> they would be like, uh, well, um, I don't know. Like, what do you mean? Like, so they would ask you basically what perspective is, is to, um, when they ask you what pers uh, perspective is, you usually you used to say, "What is your opinion? Where do you stand?" So where you stand is basically in the same when it comes to painting is where you stand in relation to the landscape. So, and I will show you some examples of these, um, but I'm also gonna go over some like a quick crash course in color theory. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is tone. So uh, tone and value. So value is the light and dark of a color. Uh, it could be color or just black and white. But here's an example of value. So we have the dark that goes, that gradates to light. So that is value, OK? So the, another term I want to go over is chroma. Chroma is the intensity of color. So we're going to have another example to show you quickly. Uh, chroma, so here's a red. So this is a nice kind of a cadmium red. And we have, you notice it's really bright right here, and it will, uh, the color will dull down as you go. Now if you notice, I have two colors I used here. And this is another little, uh, uh, tip, um, if you put the complementary, com complementary color to it, it's going to darken, darken it and dull, dull it down. Another thing is to, to realize, another tip um, with working with color, the more, the more you mix a color, the, the more the chroma will get like darker and muddier. So, um, <clears throat> like the, uh, the impressionists use this in and impressionists use atmospheric perspectives, uh, perspective, uh, especially Monet. 
um, instead of mixing the colors, he would put a color next to a color and the eye will visually mix it. And that's how he always got those vibrant paintings. So that's just an example of how you can use chroma. Uh, you can also mix it together. Uh, you can layer in a glaze on top, like watercolor. Um, so, okay, so the next thing is, um, I'm gonna talk about warm and cool. So this right here, I'm gonna show you. This is a warm color. This is a cool color. Now, I did um, a very dark black, and here's the thing about black and white. There's always some sort of color in it. There's always like, it's either leans to a warm color or a cool color. So I, I, I just wanted to show you this example. You know, this black color is a warm black. This mixed with the blue is a blue black. The same thing with white. We have, uh, uh, a, you know, a wash, uh, white on top of a red that pushes, uh, mixes with the red, makes a nice warm white, and we can do the same with the blue, which also makes a nice cool blue. I think get a little red in there, but you know, you know, I think we get the point. So, all right. So that's a quick note on um, on uh, some color theory. We're going to use this theory on a landscape. Um, and uh, what I want you to think about when you're making a landscape is to uh, think about where your resource is going to come from. Is it like a place you visited that you, it, you fondly remember? Is it from a book you read? Um, is it a photograph that you love? Or maybe even an artist that you want to replicate? Because um, <clears throat> we're going to not look at something. We're going to just kind of use the mind's eye to uh, create this uh, drawn or painted. Now, I will be using pastels, and pastels, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna be using dry pastels, and just so you're aware, you can use any, any sort of medium. You can use crayons, you can use watercolor, uh, um, colored pencils, uh, you, know, you name it, you can use the old ink that you use, the, the food ink that you use with your hard-boiled eggs for Easter. And whatever you like, this still applies. The whole color theory, atmospheric perspective, um, it all kind of comes together. But um, for people who love pastels, this will be a good lesson also in technique of using pastels. Um, we're going to be talking about blending, we're going to talk about uh, um, just uh, layering, and just laying a color on top of another color and not and preventing it from uh, from blending. All right. So, what time is it? So, um, oh yeah. Before I forget, samples. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna show you some samples. Now, what uh, I'm gonna start with uh, Chinese landscape painting. Asian art. Uh, um, they are known for. The, historically for their atmospheric perspective. All right, and I am gonna look for, this is my Chinese landscape painting uh, from my uh, Chinese landscape, Chinese landscaping um, class that I took when I was in school. So, all right, let me see, I got this. Yeah, this is gonna be kind of small, but if you notice, right here. So let me just make sure it's all in focus. All right, so you'll notice these blues and greens. These, this would be a good example of how this uses chroma, the intensity of color. So what you have here are mountains that are popping out of the atmosphere and creating a sense of space, you know? Uh, so you have, the, the, the foreground and the background, they split it up in the middle, and then he uses tone and uh, color. So that's a good example of chroma. Um, let me find one more from this. From this. Uh, let me see here. Hmm. Trying to find something that will look good on the Okay. All right. 
here we go. So, let me just throw this in there. Now, this is a famous uh, Chinese landscape painting. Um, and you will see, it's hard to tell because, again, this artist is usually, is mostly using value in his painting. And uh, you'll see the foreground, which, uh, the foreground, middle ground, and background, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention later in uh, the, the demo. Um, but you see the foreground, you see that there's a bit of contrast here, which kind of pushes everything forward and then it gets lightened up in the middle, which separates this from, uh, separates the middle ground from the, uh, it separates the foreground from the middle ground. And then you have the mountain that just shot, shoots out. And they do a little detailing here to also pop it out. Again, contrast, we, uh, the thing I didn't mention is contrast. So contrast between light and dark. So. This is a very high contrast scene, and this is very low contrast. And you will notice that high contrast tends to shoot out, pop out more in space. And you notice this is a wide angle view. If you were doing photography, you would use a wide angle lens to get the whole landscape, the shot. And then you'll start noticing the uh, atmosphere. And okay, so that example. And I'm going to show you one of my favorite artists that I've stolen from with my own artwork and that I look at all the time. This is uh, Turner's Whaling Pictures. And remember when I said, think of something that, you know, you, you really enjoy, like a landscape or a theme that you really enjoy. And Turner, with this, uh, this is from the Metropolitan Museum of Art, he had a theme for whaling. So his theme was based on whaling. And um, I actually didn't see this exhibit, <coughs> unfortunately, but this is a quick tip. Um, if you're ever in Strand in New York City, they have, it might be on the second floor, it's been a while, but um, you can get catalogs and they have great reproductions of artwork. And I took this one because I have an interest in, in whaling because I love the book Moby Dick and I love the ocean. So, all right, so back to the examples. I am gonna show you, all right, let me see here. I have these bookmarked. All right, so here is one version of atmospheric perspective. All right, so he's mostly in this painting using, again, value and warm and cool tones of that value, which I mentioned before. Um, we have a very dark black, and it looks to be like a kind of a cool black. And then if you notice what separates it, this is the horizon, which I will also again talk about during the, um, during the demo. Um, and then he has this smokestack that comes out, which is very small, um, which creates like, you know, a sense of uh, space because we have a little, a little small object in this huge space and then we have the clouds and it's a lighter tone and it jumps and again contrast you notice the foreground because it just jumps your eye automatically goes to it but then you start enjoying the the atmosphere the uh, the sky and this is a good example of using warm so we have a little warm tones here and we have some cool tones um, and they're both kind of the same value but he uses warm and cool to to play with the uh the space so all right um i think this one is going to be another one by turner um let me see. I had a bookmarked. Get to, okay, so here is two uh, studies that he's done. And what's interesting about this is that um, <clears throat> um, I'm going to be doing a drawing that um, it, uh, suggests a landscape. So 
to start off, it's not going to look exact. It's not going to be detailed. And this is a good example of how to start off first, or maybe do a quick sketch. And you'll notice how he uses tone. He uses everything here. He uses value. He uses warm and cool whites, warm and cool blacks. And then he uses chroma, which is a very intense color. Um, so for example, um, you'll see he uses this nice little black that contrasts with the, uh, the skyline. Um, and then it kind of lightens up on the side here and he warms some of the whites here, which, you know, a warm white, warm, uh, a cool blue. We have the cool blue kind of over here. It's subtle, it's extremely subtle. Um, if you're in a museum, which by the way, um, if you know a museum that has his work, uh, definitely visit. Um, so, but um, going on, we're gonna, the other thing is chroma which is right here. See how intense that red and orange is? It's just, it's, it looks like a fire that cracker that happened. So, so yeah. So he uses everything in his paintings. He uses chroma, value, and chroma, value, what is it? Chroma, value, and warm and cool, All right? Oh, and here he gets a little bit more information on to the page with his uh, painting. Again, this side, he uh, uses dark blacks and this is he lightens it up and uses warms and cools. So again, and these ones are interesting because you can't, it's hard to get a sense of the horizon. Um, but uh, uh, just a quick note on horizon because uh, we're gonna talk about that in my drawing. I'm gonna do. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do the drawing completely from scratch too. We're gonna go from to end. Um, we'll see how much time we have, because um, like I said, we want to suggest things. We want to suggest a mountain. We want to suggest the sky. We want to suggest the ocean. Okay, so um, <clears throat> a quick thing, a quick uh, rundown on the materials I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using pastel, which I said I tried. Um, right. We're going to get a little closer here. So, so this is my palette right here. Um, there's different ways you can organize your palette. And again, this has to do uh, with my little color theory lesson. You can put warms together and just the cools together. You can go from warm to cool. You can go from dark to light. It really depends on what kind of um, what kind of uh, drawing or painting you want to do. So, but I have it set where I have the nice intense colors here, and the cool colors here, the lighter colors here, which I can add a little lighter, warmer colors and lighter, darker colors, and then add the black and white, and the. So, my favorite uh, pastel to use is Rembrandt because um, they have the names of the the color on top of them, which I have a hard time following because I end up destroying these by the uh, I break them off. You'll see why I break them off um, once I start working. Um, Rembrandt is a good brand. Um, <clears throat> it's chalk. It's a it's a chalk. So it's gonna be. It's, it's painting uh, without, um, without being wet. That's how I see it as. Um, and what I like about it is I can grab and go. I don't need any water. I don't need any medium to, to blend it with. It's a very immediate uh, medium. And what I mean immediate in, in that like, I don't, like, there's no real cleanup except for washing my hands and uh, there's no brushes involved. Um, the other thing is too, just I want to quickly note that when you're working with pastels, um, I don't work with gloves. Some people uh, wear masks and wear gloves. Um, just, you know, be careful not to touch your face. And, you know, I have that terrible habit of touching my face. And because um, the pigments are, I'm not sure specifically the, the pigments are, are in these, but it's idea, just use common sense, don't, you know, eat your paint or your pastels um, <clears throat> or you know 
if it's crayons, yeah, I mean, if they're for kids, I mean, they're, they're going to gnaw on them anyways. So anyways, all right. Um, the pastels. Oh, also, there's oil pastels too, which I'm not too fond of. Um, but that's my preference. And again, um, you can use this with any, any sort of color, color pencils, crayons, um, uh, watercolor. All right, another thing I'm going to talk about quickly is paper. So what paper, what kind of surface do we want to do our drawing on? I personally like uh, Canson uh, paper, um, and I like it toned. And I'll tell you why I like it toned, because when you do, let me see. So I'm going to do a quick little, quick little demo. So when you add tone to the paper, all right, we have white, we have something a little darker. Say if I use a yellow, okay, I'm going to put a yellow, swash of yellow here and a swash of yellow here. So. Now, if you notice the difference in the color, now, um, this, this kind of sinks into the paper, and it's hard to tell what the yellow is really doing. And there's not, not anything wrong with that, but I like to use tone paper, so <clears throat> when I put color down, it pops. It, it doesn't sink into it like the white paper, like the yellow here, it kind of has, it kind of sits, it has a seat, you know, it doesn't like, uh, like lean in, you know, onto the paper. Um, <clears throat> and the thing is, uh, any sort of undertone affects the color, the, you know, the intensity of the color and the, the color itself. Um, so yeah. Oh, and the texture, the tooth of the paper. So the tooth of the paper, this has like, if you see, you can see a little pattern there. That means that the paper has some tooth to it. And I like a little tooth to paper because it allows me to layer with pastels. Um, and it allows me to control uh, how, uh, how, it allows me to control how, um, how heavy handed I can be on the paper or how light it can be because it grabs the pigment right away um, But again, there's nothing wrong with smooth paper if this was smooth you would not see these little patterns uh, here um, Smooth paper if you love to blend smooth paper is really nice for blending uh, but I like to do, I, I think this for me personally, and again, this is personal preference. There's no right or wrong. Um, for me, I like to uh, blend and layer and then blend and then maybe just put an intense color on top of it. You can do that with this paper. Um, and that's why I enjoy it so much. And I love, and oh, another thing, talk about warms and cools. Uh, let me just show you one something one more thing real quick before we get into the drawing So this has more of a cool tone so it's gonna act to warm and cool tones differently This is a warm tone paper and let me just get the there we go This is a cool tone paper and this is a warm tone paper and if you're you know this is gonna make this is gonna affect your decisions with which color you use, especially if you're just doing a, uh, especially if you're doing just very light colors or dark colors uh, with warms and cools. So, so that's a quick lesson on paper. Uh, now, again, use any paper you have around you. The, the best thing, um, artists, I've experienced this, everyone's going to experience this. Um, you're going to have to work with what you have. Okay, and that's what, what I want to encourage. Uh, but also give anyone who really loves pastels a little technique lesson. Okay, so um, I think we're gonna start the drawing. All right. So, <clears throat> all right. 
So um, I talked earlier about um, the horizon line. So this is what we're going to start with first. We're going to figure out where we want the horizon line. Actually, let me jump back a bit. Before I start talking about that, I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking of, what I'm imagining, um, where my resource is coming from, um, because uh, it'll give you an idea where to place the color. It gives you a general sense. And then you can play with it as you go along. And the thing for me is I love the ocean. Um, I love the landscape. I like looking out into the clouds during a sunset. I love the drama, especially when it's, you know, you ever have one of those scenes where, you know, you're sitting in the sand and all of a sudden a storm comes, but for some reason the storms always come out into the ocean and then come in on land. I'm sure there's a reason for that and I don't know, but um, it's very light on the sand and um, in a uh, background, <clears throat> the atmosphere is just filled with clouds and you have the water, which very, is very reflective, and you have the clouds, which are also very reflective. And there's this beautiful play of uh, uh, light and color. Um, and that's what I think, that's kind of like my happy, happy space, you know, my happy spot. Um, I visit a lot at Cape Cod. It's like my go-to for my uh, vacations. And thinking about the ocean makes me think about that. And when I'm working on artwork and if I want to relax, I'll just imagine this place. Because um, I, I don't have to leave my apartment to get into a world that calms me. Uh, on the other hand, though, if you want to be very expressive, if you want to be like, oh, man, great, you could you know, use a color palette that is associated with that. But I, for what we're doing, that's what I'm thinking about. All right. So, okay, back to the horizon line. All right, so I'm going to put the horizon line. I'm going to use a, just a pencil, just the, the mark it. So I think I'm going to do a horizon line here. This is where the water is going to meet the sky. So right here. And then uh, we're going to have, so we're going to put down, we're going to plan out what the foreground, middle ground is, and the background. So um, I'm going to plan probably right here. Here's a light mark. That's not me. That's going to be covered as we, you know, that's going to completely disappear if you start drawing. So this is going to be our foreground. This is going to be our middle ground. And this is going to be our background. Side note, you don't have to do uh, foreground, middle ground, background. You can just do foreground and background and split it up. You know, again, use your creativity, use what you like. You can have multiple, you know, layers. It's, um, it's whatever you, you know, whatever inspires you, whatever you imagine. Um, all right, so uh, let's get to the color, which is the funnest part of Funnest, fun, the fun, the most fun part. Okay, all right. So let me plan this. All right. So I'm gonna start with. The, I like to start with the background. So I have the, I have a, a purple, which is kind of a, a dark light color. It's not too intense. I want to keep things tamed at first before I get a little crazy with color. Um, so I'm just gonna lightly. You know, block out a piece of color. And here, here's the thing. This is why I like to break off my pastels because I can do a block of color really quickly. There you go. Nice block color, or I can just do this. Um, once I want to get into detail, I can just make a line like that on the edge of it. So, but you'll discover your own technique, your own kind of feel for it as you go along. Um, this is just examples of what you can do. All right, so um, now I'm gonna color some of this in, all right? And uh, the one thing I wanna note is, again, we're making a suggestion. We're gonna suggest the sky. So we don't have to worry about details. We're just gonna put the color down. All right, we have, we have our foreground, middle ground, and background. I'm just gonna put some color down and play. 
you know, and and play with it a little bit. Be expressive, you know, you can just really put it on and then, or just lightly touch. I like to, hmm, I like to kind of do a little bit of both. <clears throat> and I, what I also like to do is I don't do the whole thing. I leave some of it blank. And when I leave it blank, it leaves the drawing open. So we can use that, use this for later on. And you'll see how that unfolds as we go. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get our composition down. I'm trying to figure this out. Remember I said I want the, the, um, the skyline, what was it? Um, the, the skyline here. So we're going to go all the way down here. I'm going to do it lightly. And you know what? I'm going to leave this blank. This with no color. Because I'll let you on a little secret. I think I might put like a little sun there. Uh, maybe maybe this is during the, the uh, when the sun is going down. So this is kind of the idea of what kind of light I'm going for. All right, so we got that. So, all right. So we got the uh, background finished. Okay, I'm gonna put this back. All right, well, I'm gonna do uh, the ocean. So again, this is a beachscape. Uh, I'm gonna do the ocean. How much time do we have? Um, I'm gonna do use blue again we're just gonna you can pick any blue you want i mean it's not it's not you know you don't have to be specific we're just you know the water's blue so i'm just gonna use to block it out in blue so here we go that little bit blue and i'm not gonna press too hard i'm gonna let some of it in from the bottom very light all right, I'm gonna make this side a little darker. All right, we got the middle ground. All right, let's go to the foreground and that's gonna be the beach. So be the sand I would say is like a little brown. Um, it's a like a, a light warm color. So I'm gonna use this an ochre color to do the foreground. And I'm gonna move this. So I'm going to do a little bit of the uh, foreground. All right. So I'm going to add, I'm going to move it up a little bit. Maybe we'll have a little sand dune here on the edge. So and I'm just going to fill that in. All right. I'm going to leave this blank maybe. Actually, no, we can always just add a little up there. So now you have a little bit already a sense of space, a landscape, the atmosphere. Um, <clears throat> so we have this muted uh, brown here. We have a, a blue, a light blue, and a purple. So uh, what I like to do is, um, here's the thing. I don't wear gloves. And if you notice, my hands are quite dirty. Now. I like to blend with my hands. So if you're gonna blend with your hands or with anything, clean it off first. Because the color on your hands is gonna blend with the, the color that's on the paper. So just like quick rinse. Um, and so this is what's nice about paper too. You can blend with it. And I'm gonna leave some texture because this adds texture to the painting also, the kind of tooth that's on the paper. I'm going to rub some of this in, <clears throat> make it a little fuzzy. <clears throat> All right, we got that. And this is also the fun part. You kind of just push things around. We're pushing color around. And, you know, we want to give a little sense of fogginess, maybe. I'm just doing this. So you can see the difference. We have a little texture here. And we have this nice little smudgy area there. And this could suggest clouds, you know, coming in, which they will, by the way, um, once we put them in. Uh, okay, so again, we did that. I'm gonna wipe off my hand. And I'm gonna do a little blending 
I'm going to blend the horizon here with the background. All right, so just to give a little sense of depth in it. So you'll see this jump from one color to another. This uh, will create the, the front of the painting to come forward. So, and I kind of want this area kind of fuzzy and like atmospheric. So, all right, so what do we want to do next? All right, hmm. I'm trying to think here. Uh, all right, I am going to use a black. Now, this is really tricky. Um, <clears throat> this black is really dark. So I don't want to lay a heavy black down. Because again, I like to use blacks in a way that they're warm and cool. I just don't want to use straight black from the tube or from the, the pastel. Um, so, and I, sometimes I do this. I have a little sheet in the corner where I just do a little practice run or I might shape, shape it to what I want. And okay, so so I'm gonna use some black here. And this is gonna darken it a bit. It's gonna make the uh, purple kind of dark. And now that's a very strong black. And it's so it seems to me, I can't tell whether it's a warm black or a cool black. But um and knowing that you notice when you uh, smudge, or I don't know what you want to call it, but if you when you um I just call it smudging. Uh, when you smudge into the paper, the the pigment tends to mix with the paper. So you're actually mixing the the uh, the surface into the ground. So okay, so we got that. We got a little bit of. So this is gonna be our clouds, all right? So now we're creating another layer here. This is kind of pushing forward the top of it, all right? So. And I'm going to try to add some, per like a dark purple. Right, here we go. I'm going to add a little of this to mix in with the black because I don't want it to be just pure black. All right. So, what's happening? All right. All right. Let's see here. Where did I put my purple? I lost my purple. Oh, okay. Here, here it is. All right, so we're still mixing some of the purple here. Um, I think I'm gonna make this a little, keep this darker. Now I'm layering on top of the, the color. And because it's toothy, I can make a mark and you can see that color sit on it. You know, it doesn't automatically blend. I mean, if I wanna blend it, I just push on it and smudge it. Um, but we can just lay some color on top. All right. So we've got that. So how do we want to do this? Okay, so I'm going to work on a little bit more of the, the, uh, the blue. Um, I'm going to fill this in. No, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, a little bit about opacity, um, something that's opaque or uh, transparent. And with watercolor, you, all you do is work with uh, transparencies. And that's why the white is so important for watercolor behind uh, when you're laying it down because it, it reflects color through the washes. But with pastels, you can have opaque areas. And then you can have a little bit of a translucency from, from smudging it. So, and that changes the tone and the, and the uh, chroma to the... Uh, to the uh, drawing or painting. All right, so what do I want to do next? I am gonna, sorry about that. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be a little bold here. I'm gonna use a bright, chrom, like a really intense chromatic red. So, and that's gonna be where the sun side is. So I'm just gonna put some, smack some color on there, all right? And, you know, again, it suggests the sun. It's a, I know it looks like a blob, but again, it suggests the sun. And it works with the warm, uh, the warm and the cools. Kind of like the Turner. Um, kind of like a little firecracker that pops. All right. So, so um, I'm moving around the painting, and I'm trying to feel it out. 
you know, based on my imagination and based how I'm reacting to the painting itself. Oh, that red looks great there. Now I kind of want to make, make this darker. So I'm going to add maybe a little, hmm, how do I do this? Maybe this is going to be a green. So this green, we can just do a little green here. That's dark. It adds a little bit of darkness to the, uh, to the sand, this is the beach. This is, to me, this is, my idea is like a little sand dune in the corner. Uh, so, and we're, and um, now I'm blending it, as you can see. Um, and add a little bit more darkness. Now you can see, it has a, like a darker value to it. And this is a lighter value. And if I want to make this area a little lighter and have this pop out more, we could add perhaps, let me find a yellow. Let's add a little yellow here. Oh, gotta walk, get my hands off before I just blend it with my finger because it has the dark tones mixed in with it. So we got some yellow in it to lighten some of the sand up. And if it's too yellow, you can always go back and add again some of the uh, the ochre. So we got a little bit of so you can see how like the space go is we're creating some space there. Uh, okay. So all right. So let's get back up to here. And I'm gonna create some clouds real quick. Uh, all right, we're going to use white with this and you know I'm going to pretend that there's clouds here and and I'm just going to do some swishy marks on it uh, swishy I love, love my vocabulary here swishy swishy um, floaty you know whatever works uh, on here so I'm going to do it like this um, and I'm going to use black I'm going to be going a little bit faster because we are, this is going a lot faster than I uh, thought it would. So we're going to add a little black here. We're going to be blending uh, just different colors. And what's really nice is, you know, you can hone in on the section and really enjoy yourself. Really get into it. You know, just blend that color together. Leave some whites to pop out. Leave some, uh, purple, the chroma to pop out, you know, you can do whatever you like and see how it goes. So we're going to do a nice little black over this white and do it from here. So it seems like the clouds are coming in this way. So, all right. So I am going to jump on to this now. We're going to use a very high chroma uh, color. Because it's the sun and it's bright and it's reflecting this warmness onto the clouds. All right. And you'll notice that once I get over, once I start getting over to the purple, it's going to darken a little bit. And that's okay because um, clouds reflect light. Everything reflects light, but um, clouds really uh, usually are reflected from the bottom up and vice versa, like the ocean reflects the clouds. So, so we're gonna add a little orange, All right, a little bit of pop, All right? Now, I want to darken a little bit the ocean. So I'm using a darker tone blue, and it has a bit of a, the chroma in the blue is a bit brighter, brighter. And this value-wise is, and value and chroma is a bit darker. So I'm gonna do, um, I'm going to leave this part open. I'm going to do a little, a little bit dark here. And I'm going to let it radiate, get lighter as, we, as it pushes out. So, so we're really getting some color in here. And once you start getting color, everything starts to play with one another. And I'll, I'll give you a good example of that. But, um, so blue and orange are complementary. So these thing, two colors are really gonna vibrate. They're gonna react to each other. 
And as you're drawing or painting, you're going to have colors in there that are going to have conversations with each other. So um, uh, that comes very subjective to uh, what this conversation is going on. But uh, as you react to the painting, uh, you'll, you'll discover kind of your voice and how you want to fine tune everything. But yeah, this orange really now pops because we have the, the blues here. And this is what I really love about color because if you put one color next to a col another color, it influences each other. It's like a conversation with someone. You know, you're sitting with the, someone, you're a red, the person you're sitting next to is a blue. Oh yeah, um, we mix really well, we make purple. So, I mean, it's, it's you know, relationships. Um, and, you know, just like with people, it's also with color. All right, so back to the drawing. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit more dark in here. All right, and I'm gonna blend, start blending again. And I'm gonna go and start adding more, more colors into this. And this is a light, uh, a very light color, light orange. And I can add that here as part of the clouds, as like the orange reflects off the white. I'll just add this. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Add this. And I can add, uh, let me see, a red, a light color. Actually, maybe a pink. So this area is going to be, again, we're using warms and cools. This is a very cool red. So, and if you notice, I add a little blue here. Oh, we add a little blue, and add a little white, and a little black. So, so now we're getting a little bit more detailed with it. And if you notice, we're creating a little bit of a cloud here. And you can see that sun kind of in that atmosphere. All right, so. So I'm going to blend a little bit more just to make it a little bit more atmospheric, you know? I don't mind the texture as much. The texture is nice in the front because it creates that contrast. Again, my hands are, you might want to wear rubber gloves for this, but um, I'm going to clean off my finger so I can blend with not getting any uh, that in any other color into the into the painting or drawing. All right, so <clears throat> all right, so we're looking good here. Um, add a little purple here, and a little white here. I'm gonna add some kind of con more contrast up here. So we can just get a sense, again, have our eye move this way. All right. And it will lightly put a tone here. And some blue. And some white. All right. Now I'm going to add a little bit more tone up here. We're playing with, again, tone, like white and black, warm and cool here. We're like, keeping it separate from this chromatic intensity. Um, so we blend this white into each other. Okay. All right. Now we did a lot of work up here, so we're going to work around. And again, we're keeping it open too. We still haven't done anything here. We can definitely do something here. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another kind of layer to this. And an easy way to do that, I'm going to use this dark, kind of like muddy green. Um, and I'm going to pretend it's rocks. We're going to put like a nice little rock face here. and easily just do this, do a swash of it, all right, all right, now we have a rock, or, you know, right now it kind of looks like a blob, but, 
Um, and we're going to add some tongue to it, just to, you know. Because when we're looking at it, this is kind of a silhouette. There's not much light in it. So, so we're going to add some rock texture to it. We could add a little bit of tone. Let's add a little light there and mix it up. Okay. All right. So that's kind of looking, you know, like, like a landscape, I think. Uh, all right, I want to play with this yellow. All right, so I'm going to start playing now. I'm going to play with this yellow. I'm going to just put this on there. It's going to be bold here. I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm just going to lay it on. Let's lay this on. All right. So, so we've got some yellow. And I'm going to add, oh, again, this guy. Get some dimensionality in this guy. So I just laid this color on, and because it's, it has a, a little bit more of a tense color, it kind of pops out, right? And we're going to add a little bit here. And there we go. All right, so we have about five, about five or ten more minutes. So now the other thing is to think about, too, is when are you done with your painting? If you notice in the Turner paintings, he did like a couple of brush strokes, it seemed, and he was done. I'm done with it. Now, with this, you know, you could work on this for like over, way over an hour. You can start adding sailboats, you can add detail on the rocks, but this is just a general sense of, of you know, uh, what you need. Um, if you don't want to be detailed, you don't have to be. Um, a lot of the, the Impressionists, um, were not uh they were detailed but they were they were more about the again the atmosphere the kind of like the light flickering off each uh off of the atmosphere so all right i'm gonna quickly uh, darken this up and i'm gonna add another color to this i'm gonna introduce another color and i'm gonna think of this maybe as a wave possibly so i'm gonna put this nice green splotch here. There we go. And I'm going to fuzz it out a little bit. Um, now I'm going to use white. So I'm going to use some white to make some contrast here. And maybe, you know, this could be a little wave. You yeah, know, it's up to you. So, it's your little world. So I add a little bit of sand here. And I'm going to use some of this dark, dark blue to pop it out. And maybe use, use one of my brushes here. This is another one I did. All right, so. Um, and then So I guess that's, I'm assuming that's a little wave. Ooh, that's a good green. Let's just add some. I really like leaving some very intense colors in it because the colors play off each other. That green really plays off that red and vice versa. And that's what I kind of enjoy about doing this. Now I can blend this and it's not going to be as intense, but we could always go back into it with another red and just add a punch of color. You know, it's whatever you like, you know, and we can just you know, do it that way. Um, so, uh, okay, so far so good. What else can we do? We can also, let's see, uh, also lighten up that. So, I'm gonna blend the background, the water, to the with the white. White is a good way to blend colors together, but you will change the the tone of it. Uh, so, so we got a bit of atmosphere going on. Now that red is really intense. I mean, I like it's a little too distracting. So I think I'm gonna go back into it and. Now here's the horizon. So see, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna smudge 
where the horizon is and kind of just push it onto the water because that adds uh you know when you see a sunset you ever notice that like it kind of reflects off the water and i'm going to add the blue on top of it so so i'm going to kind of do that and here we have a nice little line so another thing about atmospheric perspective is you can use hard edges to create space. So this hard edge, you know there's like a difference in between space, the background and the foreground. Um, now it's up to you whether you want to pop that out more or push that in. Uh, so I am going to, my hands are kind of dirty again. So I'm going to use that uh, muddiness to tone down this blue a little bit so it's not so so it's not so uh bright kind of want to there we go so so we're gonna start mixing things together oh I'm almost out of time so so you know uh we have we're playing with both light values light and dark values chroma uh light and dark values chroma and what was the other thing? Oh, and warm and cool. So, all right. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. Like, so, um, all right. Yeah. And to add a little bit more contrast. So they want to see the other uh, image that you painted already. All right. Well, okay. so this one, this one over on the other side here. All right. Well, okay. So this one, um, I did a couple of drawings before the class. So this is one of them that I did. And here, you know, I, I spent more than an hour on it. So, and also I took a little bit more time and decided what I want to blend into each other. Um, Again, it's suggested, we have the suggestion of, you know, the, for, uh, the foreground and the middle ground and the background, and I'm playing with all sorts of colors here. And sometimes I really like just zone in on something and just push the colors around. And once you start pushing the colors around with your finger or with, you can use a chamois too, um, or a paper towel or a rag, uh, it gets very painterly. Uh, and that's what I also like about pastels. You can be painterly even though it's dry. So, but yeah. So, and, you know, I also do a study of colors. You can always, you know, to see how color reacts one, to one another and to see, you know, how it works spatially, um, you can do, like, a graph. I'm sure you've seen this in other classes. I think it was in the last class because I was watching the, um, the other class. Be, uh, I think it was yesterday and she was doing like these little studies and there's nothing wrong with it. If you want to do a quick study, you can do a quick study. Uh, and um, also a side note too, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I have, I test out colors on this um, just to see what color is because sometimes my pastels are so chalky and like I just like, what is this color? So I always have a like a little piece of paper to, you know, to, um, <clears throat> to practice on, to get a sense of what I'm using. Uh, I'm trying to think, any more? So how are we on time? We're at two o'clock right now. Oh, we are at two o'clock, so that, um, so I guess we're out of time. So this is what we made, thank you, you know, this is, what we made you know again you can use crayons watercolor any color just apply uh the same principles of color theory and and just play have a lot of fun with it you know it doesn't even have to even look like a landscape um you can just create blocks and just be like i want this green i want this blue i want this red i'm just gonna play with the the tones the colors it's just um, getting, your, getting used to the materials and getting used to looking at color and what color does. Uh, 
that is the the importance of the exercise and to get a little terminology so um, I think that's it is there any questions that you guys have I would love to answer some questions if you have any we could do a quick Q&A or if you'd like nothing's come through yet there's been just some comments on blending people were excited to see the one you already worked on mm-hmm Will you post an image of your final work? I will be happy to. Mm. And with that reminds me, um, <clears throat> I would love to see your work too. Um, and the the Southern Allegheny Museum would love to see your work also. And from what Morgan told me, uh, she told me that uh, that any artwork that you submit, they're going to show it at the museum. And I believe it's through a slideshow, if I'm not mistaken, if I, know, if I rem remember correctly. Um, so any work you submit from this lesson, and I'm super excited to see what you guys come up with, because every, everyone has a different sense of color and texture. So um, yeah, did I answer that question or was it or just a comment? Okay. So yeah, just, just so you're aware, um, you know, get your work out there you know this is a good opportunity um but i would love to show show you my images i'll i'll take some photos and i'll post them um i could post some other things of my own artwork that i've used atmosphere perspective in other mediums watercolor printmaking and uh you can see samples so but um any is that it is that all the questions we're good all right, that concludes our lesson in uh, landscape and the landscape drawn use an atmosphere perspective. I hope you got something out of this. I hope you're excited to do a landscape and I also hope to see your work. Uh, thank you. Bye from Brooklyn, New York. Um, I have to thank Andrew, my roommate too. He uh, big help with me with this, uh, with this production. So thank you again. Um, stay safe, and maybe I'll talk to you. Talk to you again. All right. Bye.